tell me a little bit about yourself and your background in IoT. Sure, Bruce. Uh, I'm Dean Freeman. I'm a research vice president at Gartner. I've been there 30 plus or 15 and a half years. Been in the semiconductor industry for 30 plus years. Okay. Sort of backed into the IoT from working in the MOCVD space, moving into the LED space, moving into the smart lighting space, which is one of the early IoT uses for the industry. That's right, yeah. Now, you have something you call the IoT food chain. Can you explain what that is? Sure. The IoT is an ecosystem, but it's a very well-connected ecosystem mm. for it to be successful. You start off with the silicon, you move then into the gateways, move into the middleware. From the middleware, you move into the communication side of it. Communication side, you move up into the cloud. From mm -hmm. the cloud, you go to the services. Okay. And you have that nice little loop that goes around, which is very well connected. Every piece of the puzzle, depending on the next piece and the piece before it. Right. So it's a very well integrated food chain, or at least it needs to be a very well integrated food chain mm. for you have to have a successful IoT solution. Now, food chain, um, does that imply value? Is there an order to the food chain? You said starting you know, from sensors to, uh, to it's, services? It's mostly order, but with that order mm. does come the value. Okay. At the silicon and sensors and the thing level, mm -hmm. that's usually the cheapest or the bottom part the of the food value. chain, the lowest value. Okay. As you start to move up the segments, your communications may or may not eventually outpace your the price of things mm -hmm. and the price of silicon, mm -hmm. but then as you get to the top of the food chain, which is where the service and the applications reside. Okay, and so the value you're saying is is where in each of the segments then? Why don't you explain the value in each okay. of the segments? Okay, the value in each of the segments, so in, in the thing, the value is in all right, I've got this little application right. that I want you to buy. Very right. similar to your cell phone applications. Okay. You know, go out, okay, I can uh, This track. is wearing the sensors, you're saying. Yeah, it's wearing the sensors, and okay. this is in the sensor area. Yeah. Then as I move up, you've got the gateway. The gateway is where I start to communicate and pass data to and from the thing into the, into the cloud. Okay. I've got my communication, so the value there is in moving data again. Mm -hmm from the uh, moving from the uh, data into the middleware, this is where all the software takes place. So how do I get the data into the cloud? Mm -hmm. What rules do I have for my thing? How do I want to manage my thing? What do I control my thing? Okay. Do I want to put that into an ERP system? So right. it direct, you know, it, the vending machine directly knows what I want to feed it, when and where. Or my supply chain wants mm -hmm, to know mm -hmm. how many screws I need to finish my project that I'm working on. And then you go up into the uh, the storage or the, the cloud okay. part of it, and that's where, okay, the money is mostly just in storing the data and the information. Mm -hmm. And then we get into the services where one, I either create an complete IoT service solution yep. for someone right. where I take the pieces of the chain and put it together mm -hmm. and operate from that or I move into the analytics and predictive modeling where now I'm starting to take this data and information, study it, analyze it, look at the anomalies, come up with a reason for the anomaly mm -hmm. and say, all right, you need to, that's a good thing or no, it's a bad thing or yeah, if the wind shifts five degrees in this direction, I need to tweak my uh, wind turbine by 10 degrees in order to optimize that. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so we've been talking uh, qualitatively in terms of where the value is. Now, what about quantitatively? If we were to look at, at those three stages, maybe it's four, but you could look at it in different ways. Um, today, uh, you know, if we looked at where the, co where the cost was for a project, and I don't know if that then worked, if that, if that also then says the market size. But if we look at the today, and then we maybe look in five years, the market sizing roughly percentage-wise, is it 50% in sensors right now, 25% uh, in communication, 25% in analytics? Just roughly, I'm just wondering, and I'm going to see if that also makes sense, just looking at it from a cost of a project point of view and also the size of a market point yeah, of view. Yeah, as I look at where the cost is, uh, you know, if let's say I'm putting together a... Uh, 
an automobile. Yeah. And I've got a subset of sensors, maybe in my information system, or mm -hmm. uh, let's let's use the brakes and the accelerometer. Okay. So I've got accelerometer in there. That accelerometer and the the silicon that goes into that and building that. The silicon's probably about ten to fifteen dollars. Okay. You've got the thing itself; it's probably about thirty to forty dollars. What thing are you referring the, to? The thing is the the, uh, the accelerometer that manages the brakes. Okay, so, or, or or let's let's use the uh, the airbag. Okay. So, uh, the accelerator sensor when I hit it. So, that's probably so about the actuator. Then you're talking. Yeah, the about. the actuators and mm -hmm. everything go in there. The airbag probably costs you know a little bit more. I think when you replace that, it's up in the areas of a thousand dollars these days. But the actu so the sensor you're but saying is around thirty. The it, uh, the actuator is is roughly. Yeah, the actuator. The, the, well, the sensor probably runs uh, in the five to ten dollar range. Okay. Then you have the the microcontroller mm -hmm. and the, that goes into there and the communications device that okay. goes into there. That whole package is probably not much more than twenty dollars. Okay. As I then put the the, Excel, the sensor together that it control, controls everything mm -hmm. and then manages that accelerometer, it sends a signal to the airbag, mm -hmm. that might run me you know, in the 30 to 40 dollar range. And what is that? Is that the embedded system? That, that would be the whole about? embedded system whole that embedded we're talking system. about. So that would okay. be the software, the communications, okay. everything put together in the... Including the software in there as well? Yes. Okay, yeah. so 5, what, what, 20, and 30. This, is the, this would be the... This, this would probably also include the embedded software, the middleware okay. that we're talking about. All right. okay. Now, as we then move up that food chain mm -hmm. into the analytics and the storage, mm -hmm. so now as my accelerometers start to go off and my airbags start to, to blow up, that goes into a database. Sure. So I store that data to understand what's happening, what's going on with all of that. I then analyze to say, all right, is it is it operating properly? You know, is it is it protecting the the person like it's supposed to? Is it initiate? You know, when I when the accelerometer hits, too. you know, yeah. does that happen? Uh, and that is probably where the most value of the system takes place right cost now. Cost as well, or just value? It, no cost and value. Okay. So if I'm looking at about probably thirty dollars for that entire uh, package of uh, hardware and software mm -hmm. that I've put together. Then, as I get up into the analytics and storage, mm -hmm. I'm probably looking about three to four x that. So I'd be looking maybe 120 to 200, okay. you know, 300 dollars for that one sensor. So okay. you can see that that ratio adds up very quickly. Right, right. As we look at the whole market, the semiconductor market's about 34 billion. Mm -hmm. In, tw in 2020. It in total, you're saying, or for it, it, IoT? In, for IoT. Okay. For, so the, the mm -hmm. total semiconductor market's roughly in the, just shy of $400 billion right now. Okay. So in 2020, we're looking at $34 billion for the IoT. All right. That's processing, sensing, and communications devices. Okay, almost 10%. Only so so we, we don't right. look at the memory. We don't look right. at other parts okay. that go Which in there. Which is also just, there, yeah. Correct. Mm -hmm. Then as you go up to the services and storage mm -hmm. segment of the market, mm -hmm. that whole market is roughly in the $300 billion range. In the same time frame? In the same time frame. Okay. So you can see that there's about a 10x difference in value between mm. the silicon and what we we're looking mm. at in the application storage part of the market. So then it does kind of match the pricing as well, in a sense. It, yes, right? it does. And from a percentage point yes. of view. Yeah, and, and I think I, you know, I agree with that in terms of where the value of IoT is, is going to be in the information. Mm -hmm. and, and so the, kind of it's nice that the pricing and the, value and the value kind of matches that. All right, well, now you also talk a little bit about traversing the food chain laterally and vertically. W what does that mean? And, and uh, yeah, maybe just explain that a little bit further. Right. Well, what that means is for a company to be successful, you've got to be able to get a product that sells both vertically, mm -hmm. which we have some companies that are very successful at right now in the IoT space. But you also have to be able to branch out horizontally into different markets. Right. And right now we don't have that. Right now you've got some companies trying to make that happen. Mm -hmm. You know, some of your larger ones, Amazon, uh, Microsoft, GE, mm -hmm. IBM, mm -hmm. but the solutions aren't quite there yet. Right. So it creates a lot of opportunity for some of the smaller companies that have created verticals if they can spread their footprint wider 
it'll enable them to get a bigger piece of the IoT market. So what you're so what you're saying is is basically the the um, the footprint or, or the, the the footprint that right now is really narrow. I mean, they're the very small horizontal. In fact, it's vertical. And, yeah. And so by yeah. expanding that, you're saying this is where the trend is, and this is what you're saying companies should be doing. Or well, this is this is how the industry is beginning to expand. Okay. Because so for example, we've got a very good ATM vertical. You know, automated teller machines have been around for mm -hmm. thirty plus years. Mm -hmm. But we haven't been able to take that vertical and spread it horizontally into other markets. Okay. So what needs to happen is, say, companies that are building those ATM solutions with the middleware mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. uh, software for the platform, they need to figure out, okay, how can I move that into lighting? How can I right. move that into automotive? How can right. I move that into consumer? That's the, horizontal, that's the lateral to, movement. That correct, talking yes. About. And what about the vertical movement? Then? Well, the vertical movement is just the where I'm providing the solution from the uh, sensor all the way up to the cloud. So I already have that platform in place. Okay. And maybe I'm expanding a little bit further. So okay. now I'm taking my software from maybe just being ru a rules engine mm -hmm. or, you know, helping to aggregate the data, and I'm starting to do more than just one of those many applications that are required for the data to get to, from the sensor and the thing up into the cloud. Okay, so I think I understand what you're saying. So offering a full solution vertically for a particular segment, that's one approach, and then taking that segment, hopefully it's full solution, but maybe it doesn't have to be, and go horizontally within mm -hmm. different within different uh, yes. the different markets or different mm -hmm. industry segments as well. Well, where can people, uh, where can our viewers find out more about you and your company? Right. Uh, they can go to Gartner.com, and at that point there, they can take a look at our research mm -hmm. that is available on the, uh, for the public. Uh, typically, to get more of our information, you end up having to become a client, yes. which you know, Gartner.com can also help you with. And is there an IoT section, or do you just search yes, for it? Yes, there's, there's an IoT section. Uh, okay. You can search under the IoT. We have over 100 analysts researching the IoT space. Really? All really? the way from the silicon to the cloud wow. with all the middleware and security combined in between. Okay. So we have a very large practice in this space at the, at the moment. And is there any material there that's uh, freely available, or is it only for clients? The, most of it is by purchase. There are some things that you can get. Uh, we do have some blog Okay. spots where we have active bloggers in this space. Mm -hmm. We also have some little tidbits and snippets from our symposium right. presentations that uh, the public might be able to acquire. Very good, Dean. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you, Bruce.